As some of you know, I've recently been asked to paint a Scythe of the Emperor army for a client. In this video, I'm going to show you how I'm doing the Dreadnoughts. I do have seven of these to paint, but naturally, I'm only going to show you how I'm doing one of them. The paints that I'm using for this are Scale 75 White Primer and Scale 75 Black Primer, Games Workshop URL Yellow, Games Workshop Troll Slayer Orange, Games Workshop Mournfang Brown, Games Workshop Rhinox Hide, Vallejo Game Air Negro Black, Vallejo Game Air Somber Grey, Vallejo Game Air Wolf Grey, Windsor & Newton Burnt Umber Oil Paint, Windsor & Newton Lamp Black Oil Paints. If you do enjoy this video and you find it useful, please hit the like button and if you want to see more, feel free to subscribe. As always, if you want to support the channel further, feel free to check out the members area or if you're interested in getting something painted, feel free to give us a message. We'd love to help you out. Here we go. So to start, you can see that I've got all seven in front of me. I'm priming the models from bare plastic. So this is where I'm priming the models in scale 75 white. I'm using an airbrush because rattle cans are faster, but the truth is an airbrush gives you a smoother result in my experience. Now, if you want to use a rattle can, that's absolutely fine. You'll notice that I'm only airbrushing the torso. I'm only priming the torso. The rest of the model is going to be black. I'm not bothered about having a white primer. I want a white primer where I'm going to place the yellow. Next up, I'm going to be airbrushing Games Workshop URL yellow and I'm using equal parts water, equal parts flow improver, Vallejo flow improver, and equal parts Games Workshop URL yellow. So it's basically like a 33% split on each one of them. Now, I am using an airbrush for this. First of all, because I'm doing this as a commission, because it's an army, I need to get a really high quality result and I need to paint it in the most efficient way possible. So you can do this with a paintbrush. You would just be relying on either uh, I think they call it overbrushing or glazing, but whatever works for you is absolutely fine. So, Games Workshop rail, rail Yellow over the white gives you this really, really nice vibrant yellow. Takes a couple of coats to get it covered correctly. And by the time you get enough coats, what you get is you get this really nice warm yellow and it's incredibly vibrant and bright. It's a bit too overpowering for what we want. This would probably be nice for like a really nice Imperial Fist army, like especially in the heavier metal style of painting, but we're not doing that with this. We want something a little bit more gritty. We want something a little bit more worn. And I know I said that I'm not gonna show you how I'm painting all of the models at once, but I thought it'd be a really good thing to talk about batch painting a little bit. When it comes to army painting, if I'm batch painting several of the same model at once, I will paint all of those models at once. So in this case, you can see me jumping across all seven dreadnoughts doing this exact stage all at the same time. Yes, you can see how messy my desk really is. But I'm laying down the foundation for the torso and the yellow across all of the dreadnoughts all at once. I'm not bothering with the legs and I'm not bothering with the arms. Next up, what we're going on to is the Games Workshop Troll Slayer Orange. The yellow is lovely, but like we said, it's very, very bright, very vibrant, not exactly what I want to go for. So I've moved on to the Troll Slayer Orange, and what I'm trying to do is the orange is a little bit darker, it's less luminous, but it's also got this really, really nice warmth to it. So it gives us some really nice visual interest to the color. It's not quite dark enough, so we are going to have to go darker, but what you're going to notice with these next stages is my paint consistency, my mix for the airbrush is exactly the same as previous one part flow improver, one part water, one part paint. And I'm being very, very gentle and I'm being very careful about the angle that I'm holding the model. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to airbrush in a way where it's only gonna hit one plane of the model. So it gives us this nice separation of shapes. Remember, the orange is very vibrant, it's very saturated, it looks very cartoony. So the next step is I'm going with exactly the same thing. The difference is I'm going with the Games Workshop Mournfang Brown. The Mournfang Brown is still orange, right? The brown is effectively an orange, but it's much dirtier naturally being a brown. It looks a lot more gritty and more importantly, it's much darker. For this to work, we have to push our value range, our range in light and dark really, really high, almost to the point where it's a little bit too comical but it's all gonna get knocked back in the end. And when we talk about value range, once again, I'm going darker again. This is Games Workshop Rhinox Hide, which is an incredibly dark paint. And I'm basically doing with this one, all of the undersides. So the majority of the armor is going to be either yellow 
or orange and brown and then the underside of the model the darkest parts that i can really push are going to be the games workshop rhinox hide and all the time i'm trying to keep those sharp angle lines so i've talked about in this in previous videos make sure you get the angle right for the way that you're painting so it only hits one side of the dreadnought next up i'm still as you can see at the stage where i'm doing all of these dreadnoughts all at once so what I'm doing here, I've masked up with Tamiya masking tape all of the dreadnoughts where I've painted all of the yellow. And now what I'm going in with is scale 75 black primer and I'm priming the rest of the model. I'm priming the areas that are going to be painted black and all the metallics. So now what we have is we've got all of the arms being primed and basically the legs and the central face, let's say, of the carapace. Now the problem with the black primer is first of all, it's, it's not very hard wearing and it's very dull as well. It's quite matte and I don't like that. So once I've done a prime of the scale 75 black, I'm going in with Vallejo Game Air Negro Black. This black is much richer. It's a little bit more satin. It's, it's a little bit more satin, but it's really important that we get a nice black for this. In my opinion, there's nothing wrong with leaving primer as a color on your models, but I find a lot of primers, especially airbrush primers, they're a little bit flat. They're a little bit boring. They're a little bit too matte. Next up, just like we did with the yellow, we're now going to start highlighting the black. This is Vallejo Game Air Somber Grey. It's a nice bluey grey, so it gives us a nice tint to it. If you just go with like neutral greys, it can look a little bit boring, to be honest with you. Um, so a little bit of colour to it, like nice blue grey or a purple grey or something is really great. Picking out my brightest spots, don't panic if it goes too grey and you get overspray. In my experience, maybe it's just I'm not good enough with an airbrush, that's quite possible, but I always get some kind of overspray. My sprays are always a little bit too big. That's fine, because we can go back in later and airbrush in the black again, which is what we're gonna do. But priority is, we're trying to create small little highlights where the black basically shifts to gray. And where I was talking to you about holding the armor, um, airbrushing across the panels earlier for the yellow. This is exactly what I'm talking about. You see a gradient at the bottom and then I hold my airbrush parallel to the change in the angle of that panel and I only hit one side of the panel. So this is what we're aiming for with something like Dreadnoughts. Next up, we're gonna go brighter again. This might seem really, really extreme, but trust me, it all gets toned down later on. But this, this is the Vallejo Game Air Wolf Grey. This is a really, really bright grey. It almost looks white. And you, you don't have to go this extreme, but I genuinely, when you see this model at the end, you don't notice these extreme bright highlights because it does get knocked back. And this is the same for when you're doing any high contrast piece. You need to go much, much brighter because by the time you're painting all the details, especially if you're going to add weathering, it's going to get toned down. So you've got to go much more extreme than you think is right. If when you're doing this stage, you look at it and go, that looks perfect my suggestion would be go even brighter because that perfect that you're seeing is going to change. Like I said, with the overspray, I'm now going back with the Vallejo Game Air Negro Black and I'm just filling in the black again where I've got gray everywhere. Like it's a little bit too gray, bring the black back and then it's fixed, as you can see. And this is fundamentally how we paint the yellow and black. But one thing that the client wants is they don't want an heavier metal style paint job, as in, they don't want a smooth, perfect paint job with like really, really crisp, clean edge highlights everywhere. That's not what their priority is. I've included the removing the masking tape from the model in the video, honestly, because it's just really satisfying to see. But you remove the masking tape from the model. If you've got little bits of paint that have torn off, don't panic because you can either fix it with the airbrush or you can hide it with a little bit of weathering later on. One thing that I would say, the Tamiya masking tape is really great and I rarely have an issue with paint being torn off, especially if I've got a good primer. But before you place it on the model, what my suggestion would be is to tack the ta tape onto your trousers or something beforehand so it loses a little bit of its stickiness. That can really help. And this is especially important if you're doing something like Forge World resin. That, that resin is historically an absolute nightmare for the paint not sticking onto it. So definitely like tack the tape onto your leg to get rid of the stickiness. You can use something like a liquid mask, which is basically like a putty that you paint on that covers everything and you can peel it off afterwards. 
that stuff is supposedly really good a lot of people swear by it i don't particularly like it i don't get on with it i don't like the way it behaves it's not wrong it's just one of those things next up you can see that i've jumped ahead a little bit all i'm doing here all i'm jumping ahead on is base coating some of the colors so all of the silver all of the metals are base coated in uh, scale 75 black metal the cables are going to be games workshop corn red any of the bronze is scale 75 victorian brass and the aquila on the chest like i'm just that's base coated in games workshop dawnstone and the plasma cannon i'm going to do a separate video on the plasma cannon like i got a lot of requests for the different plasma coils last time so i'm going to do the same again i'm going to do the plasma cannon separately but for all intents and purposes the plasma cannon is base coated in games workshop corn red at the moment next up because we are going to be using oils on this and we're going to be putting transfers in place i'm airbrushing a varnish a gloss varnish specifically over the entirety of the dreadnought this is a vallejo gloss varnish it's the one that i use i'm not sure if it's the best I've been using it for years and it works really well for me and I've had no reason to change it. So Vallejo gloss varnish for this. This is to preempt to make life easier for the oil paints and also for the transfers. Some people might want to know where I got the size of the Emperor transfer transfers for this. I got them from Fallout Hobbies in the States. I'm going to put it out there right now. I'm not a big fan of Fallout Hobbies. Their quality of their transfers is excellent. Genuinely. They're, they're absolutely amazing. I haven't found anyone better. If anyone knows a company that's better, especially in the UK, please let me know because I don't like using Fallout Hobbies. My, my customer service experience of Fallout Hobbies is shocking. I've had transfers that have never turned up. I've had like orders that are six months behind. I've had like, they, they don't respond to any emails. So I don't particularly recommend them, but I don't have a better option. But this is where I got them from. Fallout Hobbies in the States, the quality genuinely is excellent. When it comes to transfers, I'm not an expert on this sort of stuff and I hear conflicting information. The way that I do this is I gloss varnish the panel and then I use micro set to get the transfers to stick. And then if I need to, I use micro sole to soften out those transfers and get them to conform to the right shapes. And then I'll do another gloss varnish over. This has always worked for me, but I hear a lot of conflicting information that this isn't the best way of doing it. And this is mostly from the historical painters. So I'm going to do a little bit more research before I do an in-depth video on applying transfers. But anyway, that's how I do it for now. Once you've got your transfers in place, we're then going to be working with the oil paints. The oils in this case are Windsor and Newton, Burnt Umber and Lamp Black. And we're going to use these in a few different ways. Starting off, we're going to be using the burnt umber and i'm basically going to be creating a wash with it this is windsor and newton artist thinner uh, it's artist white spirit i would recommend that you get an odorless one because this stuff can really really stink but we're getting we're getting some of the burnt umber not the black yet we're getting some of the burnt umber you can see that i'm making up a bit of a wash and basically what we're going to do is you're going to tap it into the little recesses and it's going to flow into place now when it comes to brushes what i would do is i would recommend that you use an old brush for this this, this is an old either Windsor & Newton or Rose & Co, I can't remember, but it's absolutely knackered. And the idea with this is I'm dropping it into any of the recesses and any of those areas that I want to be darker, especially around the rivets. And you can see it just flows into place really nicely. The reason why oil paints are, in my opinion, better than using a traditional wash is basically because you can rub them off after they've dried like you leave them to dry for a little bit and then you can rub them off so it's really really forgiving so if you get some big stains or um you make a bit of a mess or you leave like you you miss a bit the amount of times like with the old games workshop was it washes you're doing like a non oil wash you accidentally get a blob of an armor panel and you don't see it and you come back to it and that armor panel's ruined you don't have that issue with oil paints so I, I am a big advocate of them, especially with army painting. I think they're really, really useful, but it's up to you. If you want, you can just use something like Games Workshop Agrax Earthshade and it will do the job just as well. It's just not as easy, in my opinion, with this. Next up, what I'm going to do is I'm adding a little bit of that lamp black into the burnt umber. So I don't want to use pure lamp black. I find black washes just look a little bit off, to be honest with you. 
Um, I, I just don't like black washes. I think it looks a little bit dirty and a little bit nasty. It's just my opinion. So instead I add the black to the brown and it, it works a little bit better. So I'm still getting an extremely dark brown, which works. And what I'm doing here is I'm going over the details like you can see the gray Aquila and I'm going over all of the metals. If I just put the burnt umber over it, the burnt umber is not really dark enough to shade these areas which is why I add the black to it. It's purely to darken down the value of that brown. And I'm going over all of those areas. So this is just like a big messy recess wash. Don't panic too much about leaving blobs of paint anywhere because as we said, like the next stage, we can clean it all up. But once you've done this recess wash, next up, we can look at the next part of the oil painting. What we're going to do this time is I'm adding more burnt umber to this white spirit. So this is now thicker, right? This is no longer as much of a wash. You can see now that I go over these rivets, it's much darker, it's much stronger. So the idea with this is I'm almost building up like areas of dirt, like it's, it's really, really quite strong. And this gives me, first of all, variation in my shades, in my darks, which I think is really, really powerful. It also gives me the opportunity to basically dirty down this dreadnought because what it'll allow me to do is it'll allow me to add streaking to this model as well which again we're going for something which is quite worn not extremely slow extremely so but we want something which is quite dirty quite grim dark i suppose is is the way of putting it but you can see how i'm now brushing that burnt umber directly downwards so this looks like streaks of paint coming off of or streaks of rust let's say coming off of the rivets rust or dirt or however you want to look at it and already for me i think this looks far more interesting now don't panic about these lines needing to be like really really crisp neat lines because first of all we're going to adjust them secondly as you can see here if you do any that you don't like you can just rub them off it's really really great really easy really forgiving you just need to basically be willing to work with some oil paint and some white spirits which can be a little bit awkward next up i'm getting pure burn umber Depending on how much time you want to spend on this, you can get different colors. It's really nice to add in a little bit of black in this as well, maybe a little bit of green or red, like just to add some variation. But we're putting on blobs of solid burnt umber oil paint here. And then what I'm getting is a relatively clean white spirit with a damp brush. If your brush is too wet, it's going to do exactly what it's doing here. Can you see how it's like all flowing and messy? It's really watery. It looks like a wave and it's moving around loads. That's not really what you want. So that means you've got too much white spirit on your brush. So what you want is you want a relatively clean brush with white spirit on it and you want the brush to be damp. So grab the white spirit and then remove any excess. So your brush is fairly clean. And then what you can do is basically these blobs of oil paint, you can either run your brush over the top of them and make these really cool streaks and you can clean it up, you can adjust it to what looks good to you. So I'm really happy with that. Those previous streaks that you put in place with the rivets as well, this is the point where if you didn't get nice brush marks or you don't like the shape of them or maybe they're not particularly straight, you can clean those up as well. See that I've got these big marks, there we go. And then I'm just gonna run the brush over the top. So now what this is, this is giving me some variation in the yellow. It doesn't look quite so cartoony or graphic and it looks makes it look a little bit more dirty and gritty, which is far more interesting in my opinion. This is what I was talking about with those streaks. You can see that I've gone over them with a damp brush, softening out the streaks and it looks a little bit more natural. I know a lot of people are scared of oil paints, but it really is quite fun to do. Now, <laughs> What I'm doing here is I'm going over with a piece of tissue and I'm just cleaning off any of the coffee marks or the, the, the marks that just look a little bit dirty and a little bit rubbish. My suggestion would be, would be to use a cotton bud, but for the life of me, I've just bought a new pack of cotton buds and I cannot find them. And I know I've put them somewhere safe and I'm never going to find them again, which let's be fair is normal, but I refuse to go out and buy any more. So I just use some tissue for the time being. Use some cotton buds for that. Once you're all done with it, we need to seal up the dreadnought another layer of some kind of varnish, right? I'm using the satin varnish here. Gloss varnish or satin varnish to seal in all of the oil paints will do the job just fine. You can do a matte varnish as well. My only problem with the matte varnish is what happens is, is it tends to dull down everything, especially the metallics, and it makes it look a little bit rubbish. 
Bearing in mind, you can stop at any point now, right? This Dreadnought already looks nice. Also, for the purposes of the black, I did exactly the same thing with the black with the burnt umber, right? So with the black areas of the model, I did the burnt over umber over those as well. It just doesn't really show much, so there's not really much point in me showing you. But I did that on the black area as well. Next up, I've got a little bit of sponge from like a blister, from a blister pack, like a Games Workshop blister pack. And what I'm doing is I've got a little bit of Games Workshop URL yellow, and I'm going over the corners and the edges of these armor panels, and I'm putting on little marks. And the idea with this is, I'm not edge highlighting on this. If I do nice, neat, crisp edge highlights on this, it's gonna look a little bit strange considering it's so worn. So instead, I'm catching the edges with rail yellow, and then I'm using rail yellow with a little bit of white added to it. So if you wanted to paint for this, something like flow and model color, ice yellow would work really well. But the idea is by going in with this sponge and doing your rail yellow, and then ice yellow or your rail yellow and a little bit of white, it gives you variation in these chips and marks. And basically what it looks like is where this dreadnought is really dirty, where it's knocked into stuff, it's actually taken off big chunks of the dirt. So these marks are where it's scraped off the dirt. The next up, we're going in with same thing, but Games Workshop Rhinox Hide. These marks are this idea that the paint has worn off and we're seeing whatever's underneath come through. Be very careful with this. If you do too many, it can be incredibly overpowering. And if you're going for that result, then that's great. But in my case, all I'm really aiming for is like the sharpest corners of this dreadnought and areas of the dreadnought that really would like hit different sections, which is why I'm going for like the corners of the carapace and that sort of stuff. So we're looking for this nice subtle variation in texture. Just remember with the sponge in, make sure you remove the excess paint from your sponge and test the sponge on like your hand beforehand to see what sort of mark it's going to leave. This next step is entirely optional, but I wanted to put some more interesting intentional marks onto this dreadnought. So I've got Games Workshop Rhinox Hide and I'm painting on some big chunks. So like some big scratches or maybe like a big chunk of um, paint has taken off in the middle of the torso, that sort of stuff. Because again, what I'm looking for is variation and I find this stuff quite interesting. It's worth pointing out, if I was doing this as a competition piece, I wouldn't have done any of this with a sponge. I would have done everything with a paintbrush. I would have done the whole thing freehand. So the sponge just drastically speeds things up. But adding in a few scratches and a few chips, like which are larger, gives a much more interesting result because you now have more variation. One thing I would be very careful with, do not make all of the scratches the same direction and the same size. Everyone does this all the time. Like, not everyone. Lots of people do this on all the time. I see it online all the time. It looks really, really funky because you're creating a pattern and we don't want patterns in something like this. Next up, I have a Vallejo model color ice yellow, or as I said, in this case, Games Workshop URL yellow with a little bit of white. I'm highlighting underneath all of these chips and scratches only the big ones right this gives them this element of three dimensionality is that a word <laughs> i don't know it's a word it's a word now but basically it gives them this idea that they're, they're they have depth again if you're going for a higher quality piece and this was say a competition piece or something like that every single mark would have a highlight but in this case it's a high quality tabletop piece so it's only the big marks that we're doing and you can see it really makes those chips pop. Next up, what I want to do is I want to make the rivets work. The rivets, there's nothing wrong with the rivets, but I want them to stand out amongst the yellow. And it goes to, I would, by my logic, if, those riv if this dreadnought was scratched up and dinged and marked this much, the rivets would have had their paint worn off as well. So in the case of the yellow, as to preempt this plan for the rivets I'm going over every river in the yellow area with pure black basically because when we put a color if we put silver over those rivets what's going to happen is if you put silver over the yellow rivets they're not going to stand out at all if you put black over the rivets and then put the silver on the rivets those rivets will now stand out and they will look a hundred times better but before we do that we need to make sure that the black is also looking good 
And what's important is that it matches the finish that we have on the yellow. Now, naturally, it's a different color. So we're not going to, it's, it's got to be done a little bit differently. So first of all, we're going back to those colors that we use in the airbrush. So this is the Vallejo Game Air Somber Gray. And what I'm do, doing is I'm picking out those areas that are going to receive damage. So this is basically the edges and any areas like the fist, which are gonna receive lots and lots of marks. Now, once again, I'm not edge highlighting this. I don't need to edge highlight this for the result that I'm going to get. So I'm treating these chipping, this chipped result as the edge highlight to give me the readability on this dreadnought. Once you've done all of the edges, I'm going back in with the wolf gray. Now this I really like because I wanted it to pop quite a lot. You might not like it, it's a little bit bright. If you don't want it so bright, mix the wolf gray in with the somber gray and get something a little bit darker. But basically the brightest corners, like, sorry, the corners that will receive the most marks, I'm going in with somber uh, wolf gray. And the idea with this is, is first of all, it gives me a value range in the marks, the chips, like we did on the yellow. So it makes it more visually interesting, but it also makes it pop a little bit more. Again, up to you. There's no right or wrong here. You need to go with what you like the look of. For me, I think this is quite important for the black. I know a lot of people will just go in and sponge on silver with the black. I didn't really want that. I wanted something a little bit more natural. If you want, I didn't. If you want, you can go on and add in a few scratches and marks onto the black as well. This is where we were talking about the rivets a second ago. So for the black part of the armor, all I've done is gone over the rivets on the black part of the armor with wolf gray this makes them stand out in my opinion in my opinion painting the rivets on a dreadnought or something or anything like this is actually really important because they're a really interesting detail that stand out and make it look interesting so i would take the time to do it as for the yellow i'm using scale 75 heavy metal i know i didn't put that on the list at the beginning i forgot but it's scale 75 heavy metal it's quite a bright silver and what you can see is there's loads of rivets that I forgot. Every time I forget about a rivet, before I start painting over it, I'm going to paint those rivets black. Otherwise, that metal, that silver, is not going to stand out. It's going to look absolutely rubbish. And you're going to see it right here. I paint the silver over those yellow rivets, and it just looks rubbish. It doesn't stand out enough because the value range is not enough. As in, there's not enough dark and light. So if, even if you think, oh, just I've missed painting that rivet black, I'll just go in and paint it silver and it will be fine. It just doesn't work. You may as well just not do it. You may as well just leave it yellow. So the black of the rivet is there to basically frame these little silver dots that we put on the dreadnought. And the thing with this sort of stuff is these little details, basically they break up the monotony of these massive armor panels. Same as weathering in general. So things like rivets, being able to change the color of the rivets is just really, really powerful. After all this is done, I know this seems like a lot of work, but trust me, it's worthwhile. Um, I don't know about you guys, but for me, this dreadnought took me basically a day. It took me a day to, to airbrush all of the dreadnoughts. And then it took me a day to finish this dreadnought. After this, I'm just painting in, I'm just finishing up all of the details like the Aquila. I'm just putting in some highlights and that sort of stuff. One thing I will personally say to you is if you're batch painting anything, you can do every single one of these stages on every single model, right? So the weathering, like the oil wash, you can do all of the dreadnoughts, the chipping, you can do all of the dreadnoughts at one go and then move on. I will do all of, in my opinion, I airbrush, I do all of the airbrushing in one go. I batch airbrush everything. And then I'll batch, uh, I'll batch paint prominent features on everything like i'll batch paint maybe all of the aquilas because they're all the same but generally after the airbrush stage i paint everything individually and the reason for that is is because when the minute you get past the airbrush stage it's incredibly easy to start missing bits where individual models become different so in my experience and my preference it's better to batch paint the parts that are just so so obvious like the airbrushing or aquilas or maybe some guns and that sort of stuff but when it comes to all the details i do all of those on an individual basis so we don't forget anything for a client but that's it i'm hoping this video has been helpful i hope it's been clear let me know what you think in the comments it means a huge amount 
if as always you want to support make sure you hit the like button hit subscribe if you want to see more from us if you want more content make sure you check out the members area there's tons of videos in the members area and as always if you want a stunningly painted army feel free to get in touch thank you everyone for watching it means a huge amount to me i'll catch you later